So, hello, Ooh. I'm Roger, and uh, this will be a bit of a peculiar talk in the structure. It will not actually be a talk. The first part will be a small talk, actually. Uh, but the second part will be a more like an open discussion, because there are problems, and I don't know how to solve them. So I really hope in the last part that we'll have a discussion about that, and we may find some solutions. A bit of context, though. Um, some of you know me. It's highly probable that if, if you met me before at an event, we talk about fun and immersion. Generally because I reacted really badly about it. <laughs> so where it came from, a bit of the context. So who am I? Um, I'm a game designer, um, game consultant. Uh, I work in very different kinds of games, from board games to role-playing games to video games to VR, um, hybrid games, urban LARPs, pervasive games, um, black box LARPs, well, chamber LARPs, various stuff. And just to be clear, this is a problem I've met in all these contexts. It's not a problem just uh, tied to LARP. I also think, though, that LARP uh, discourse is way more advanced in uh, dealing with this than the other fields. So you are the right people uh, to solve this, I, I think. Um, so another small introduction, and is what I hope to achieve with this talk. Uh, in the long run, I hope to start something or to contribute to something that will improve game literacy. I know it's a huge thing. Uh, I know there are a lot of people doing this, doing insanely good job. And I hope a fragment of this can contribute to the global game literacy. Uh, the second thing, I really hope that we'll reach a kind of denormalization of the words immersion and fun. It may sound weird now. I hope it will be clear why um, I hope this um, after I talk a bit about it. I also hope that we'll come uh, with you together in an open discussion with some uh, um, proposals or some activities or solutions that we can actually, uh, practical stuff that we can do uh, to deal with the problem and solve it. And the last one is a bit more personal. Uh, it's a bit like, uh, um, I really want to feel less frustrating and less like I'm going to a crusade against stuff that I cannot defeat. Because these are not things I want to defeat. These are things though that seems really big and really I ingrained with society that I, I feel that really, really, really hard to change. And the process will be long process, step by step. And one day, maybe, I will not be frustrated about this. But this will won't be around, I, prom I promise you. But now, here, but then we can talk at the bar and we, I can totally rant about it. So let's start with the immersion. Problem with immersion, it means nothing. Uh, people use immersion for very different purposes and it's used like a keyword, a gimmick word, that can mean anything and nothing at the same time. This, I believe, is really a problem because different people talk about different LARPs and how immersed they were and how their LARP was immersive and they are actually meaning very different things, but they are using the same word and this creates a problem in conversation. Maybe you say, oh, I went to this lab, it was insane, so immersive. And I went there and it was not immersive for me. Why? How? How is this possible? Is it a problem of the lab? No, it's not. Um, who are you are familiar with the Gordon Kalea player in model, model, model? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, I promise this will not be an academic talk. I will go quickly through these things because I think that Gordon Kalea's work about this is insanely helpful. First of all, uh, this came from a book called In Game, From Immersion to Incorporation by Gordon Kalea. It's a book about, about video game theory, but when I read it, I found it insanely helpful for LARP discourse. And nobody, almost nobody in the LARP discourse is talking about it. There is uh, Sarah Lynn Bowman that is talking about it, and we'll talk about um, her work in a, in a second. But let's go through this. So what Gordon Kalea said, um, coming from the VR environment, the video game environment, the AR, there is this uh, also immersion word uh, thrown in the VR discourse. And it's like, it's actually problematic because it means nothing. A lot of VR companies say our game is, our, is the most immersive game or our video game is the most immersive experience you can have. Uh, so what they did is basically, it took the concept 
and break it down in six different areas. And when you can talk about these areas, then the whole involvement, it's way more clearer about what you're talking about. Let's go with the kinesthetic involvement. So kinesthetic involvement, as the name can suggest, is the involvement, the physical involvement you have in activity. It can be a LARP. It can be like a LARP, a buffer LARP. Uh, we do a buffer weapons. Uh, it can be uh, a sport. You're kinetic, kinesthetically involved in the sport. It can be a dance, dance revolution tournament, for example. It can be a Wiimote. Um, it can be full uh, body VR. Okay? Uh, kinesthetic involvement refers to all of this. It's also referred to when you're playing with a controller with your, just your finger, you're still kinesthetically involved. Maybe way less than a buffer LARP, perhaps. But it's still a factor. Spatial involvement, it's uh, mainly what we refer to the 360, <coughs> the, the high-res. Uh, high uh, it's, uh, I'm playing in a castle and it is an actual castle. I'm playing in a spaceship and it's not a spaceship, it's a destroyer ship in the case of Monitor Celestra, that actually is designed as if it's a spaceship because you're playing inside. But it's also referred to level design and can be dungeon design. You can still play like Dungeon and & Dragon and uh, tabletop role-playing games and still feel like you are spatially involved with the description that the games uh, surround you, okay? Um, it can also be a black box. Black box LARPs can be especially uh, involving. It's just do that with light instead of just with scenography. Um, and well, video games do that with level design generally. Is That's the field that refers to, to special involvement. Um, then we have the shared involvement. Shared involvement is uh, involvement that comes when you play with, y with your friend, for example. Like, let's say we are good friends, we play together a LARP. I'm already more involved because I didn't come alone. I don't feel like in the core and like I don't know nobody. I play with friends. I'm already more involved in the activities. Maybe it's one of my friends organizing it. Uh, maybe there is a carter with an Hawaiian shirt. It can also refer to carters, to NPCs, uh, to in video games, to avatars, to uh, digital entities. Maybe there is a long series of video games. I've played all of them. When the new one came out, I'm already familiar and involved with the characters. There is the shared involvement. Narrative involvement is the involvement with the story, the plot, the secrets. Um, it can be like an uh, uh, investigation, investigation in a video game, like trying to find the murder, for example. But it can also be a classical parlor LARP, where you have your secret and you want to know also the other people's secrets to destroy your plot or something like that. It's the involvement in, I want to know what's happening, I want to know where this is going. It's similar to the effective involvement, but it's very different. The effective involvement is the involvement with your emotion. Things make you laugh, they make you cry, they make you happy. Uh, the thing is, you can have a really basic plot story and have a hugely effective involvement, or vice versa. Like, think about Jeep Form games. Uh, who knows here Jeep Form games? Raise your hand if you know. Jeep Form games generally have really, really trivial plot, we can say. Almost no plot, like a premise. You're playing this scene, that's it. There is no narrative involvement there, but there is a lot of effective involvement. Or you can read a long story that maybe you are interested in, like I'm solving a murder, but you don't empathize with any of the characters, so there is no effective involvement. Then we have the ludic involvement, the involvement with the mechanics. You're rolling your dices, you're playing your cards, you're customizing your robots uh, in Armored Core, for example. Or you're building your party in a JRPG. Or in an escape room, you're trying to solve the puzzle, and you find the puzzle challenging and involving. All of this is immersion. We just use a, a single word for this, and this is really unfair. Because second problem is the use of immersion as a positive descriptor. So raise your hand if you are used immersion as a word to positively talk about a game, please. Raise your hand if you use immersion to talk badly about a LARP. Like, this game was immersive. Ah, it was sucked. Nobody? So you're using immersive, not, not just you, just to be clear, everybody is using immersive. That is, this was a good game. What does a good game mean? We are supposed to know just because you tell me it was immersive, it was a good game. Immersion is highly subjective. Like, a, a game can try to, to have mechanics that uh, involve you, but if you're, not the player, if you're not the player that likes to roll dice, a dice game will not involve you. If you are a player that loves to play with JRPGs and build your party, Holy shit, that can involve you a lot, okay? 
But yeah, it's highly subjective. And the positive descriptor brings us here. A lot of people are talking about immersive, at least the best thing, the top immersive games. Uh, which board games do you find to be the most immersive? This is insane. The next step is this. Too many companies are calling their work immersive. This is a gimmick work, it's a marketing work. It, it, it's, it is slowly losing its meaning. It had a, a po powerful meaning when it was used in, in large context, uh, in the Finnish scene also. Because it, it meant like a, a breaking point from the previous stuff, from duct tape and, well, you know probably more about this than me. But now, now it's more and more becoming a market war. Like, yeah, we have the best immersive game, come to us, super immersive. This is a problem. If you want to know more about this, I highly suggest you Immersion into LARP by Sterling Bowman. It's an article. And the book from Gordo Kalea. Um, me and Sarah have talked a lot about this. We agree on the content, generally, but we disagree with the solution. And we'll talk about it in the solution part. So next topic of the talk is the problem with fun. Also, it means nothing. Uh, who here used fun as a means of saying it was a good game? Raise your hand, please. Who here used fun as a means of it was a bad game? Nobody. Yeah, that's what happened. It's like it was a good game. It tells you nothing. <coughs> it really tells you nothing. Like saying, oh, you really should play this game. It was insanely fun. Like, I'm telling you nothing. We have words for it. There are so many words that we can express emotion. Why we always reduce it to fun? There are so many different types of fun. We even come to say type 2 fun. This is insane. We have so many words to express all the spectrum of, of the negative emotion that you can express. And you still use type 2 fun? This is because you, the connection is it was a fun game, so it is a good game. But if the game was not about something fun, then it's not a good game anymore? Maybe I should say type 2 fun, so it's still a good game. So we're using fun because we connect it with it was a good game. And this is problematic. Because it can be an insanely good game if it was like a terrible, sad experience. There is a paper by Marcos Montola. It was called The Positive Negative Experience of Extreme Role Playing. And there it explained why you can have way, way good experiences with labs that are about something terrible that you will never want to experience in your real life. But uh, jeep phone games also are kind in that spectrum of experiences. We have so many words why we are still using fun. Because what are we actually talking about when we say a game is fun? We are not talking about the game. We are talking about the play. A game is a set of rules. It's an ecosystem of mechanics. The play is the thing that you found fun. And we really need to separate the two things. <coughs> Because you can have fun with a terrible game. Like, I honestly think, and I've played a lot, Dungeon and Dragon is a terrible game. It has a terrible game design. But you can still have an insane amount of good time with it. And vice versa, I've got games that I really, really appreciate game design-wise, that I really love, and we can talk hours about it, that I will never play again. Because I don't want to play them. Because I'm not having an experience that I, I like, but Looking at the design, holy shit if they're good. <laughs> and this is so radicated that even in the MDA, it is one of the main uh, game design framework uh, models that we use, is the mechanics, dynamics, uh, aesthetics. It's still talk about fun. Okay. No problem. So, again, Fun as a positive descriptor. What this bring? This bring the concept of it was a fun game again, so it was a good game. But if the game was a game about uh, torture, or abusive relationship, or oppressive system in the Cuban uh, end of the Cold War towards the queer people, is it still Tina fun? There are people that say you can't make a game about that. Well, fuck them. You can. Of course you can. We did that. LARP is a medium. We need to learn this. LARP is not just a game that you do for entertaining. You can do it. I'm not saying you should stop doing fun games. You should stop doing happy games. That's not the thing. You should do that, actually. We, are, we have an insane amount of need now for uplifting game, for happy game. 
for positive experiences. There is really a need for that. I'm not saying you should not do that. But we've made books about terrible stuff. Comics, movies. Nobody say it's a comic. You can't make a comic about, uh, well, you know. Of course you can. Everything has consequences, though. So if you make a game about those things, don't do the just, just because, yeah, I can do it, so I'm doing it. You need to do proper research. You need to talk to people. This is an entire whole topic. I will, I will not focus on this here. If you are a game designer, please do your uh, research and development. Please talk with people. If you want to know more about this, there's a talk called You Can Make a Game About That that tells you why you should make a game about that. Uh, by Richard Dansky, there is This My Sting a Little by Tobias Rigstad, that was also one of the authors in the Jeep Forum movement. There is The Positive Negative Experience in Extreme Role Playing by Marcus Montola. And uh, also about the consequences. Uh, who knows here the, what happened in WorldCon 75? Raise your hand. Nobody? Okay. Uh, it was, WorldCon is a science fiction convention. Um, uh, I think it was one year ago, 2017, two years ago now, they organized it in Finland, if I remember well. And uh, in the program, it was quite a progressive program, actually. It was not just science fiction presentation of books, but also games. And the topic was uh, estrangement. And um, a LARP designer brought a LARP uh, about uh, Alzheimer's disease. And uh, some people say, you should not make a game about that. This is not something you, make, you need to make fun about. But the game was not a fun game. It was not meant to be uh, ridiculizing the topic. It was actually meant for you to have, you know, the, you, you are familiar with said LARPs, are you? Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Um, the thing is, it was so ingrained, it's a, it's a game, should be fun. That's a topic that should not be, it's not fun, you should not make a game about that. That basically what they did is that they pulled out the game from the program. This is what happened, this is, this is a real problem. I mean, there are of course bigger problems, I'm not saying about that. But this is a problem that we, that work in games, need to deal with. And this needs solution. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not here. I'm here to talk with you now. This is the discussion, okay? The talk is the talk and just <laughs> I don't know how to solve it. So now open discussion, please. Yes. This is the, the answer to that. I, I, Kalea was not using immersion on purpose. And I'm also saying we should move away, not because I dislike the word, but because we need to denormalize the word. But immersion is so loaded as a term that it's problematic because, again, you, you have your own uh, definition of immersion, but everyone has a different one, and a really different one. Yeah, but that goes for what word. Yes, I know. And uh, I, that's what. It, it depends. I, I'm immersed emotionally, then I will call probably affective involvement. But it, which kind of immersion? It's like because I'm in a 360. Well, if you think that you are your character. I, I call that bleed. No. <laughs> if, if you think as your character is a form of bleed. No. It's, a, it's a kind of... I mean... Your brain, your, your, your thoughts are in your physical body. If your cart is affecting how you think, it's a bleed out. But then we get into a, an overuse of the term bleed instead. Yeah, so yes, but, but bleed is way less problematic. It's not, nobody's using bleed as just a always positive stuff. You can have a terrible bleed. <coughs> bleed can be negative. Immersion is a word that is used only as a positive, always. That's the problem that I have with the word. Yeah? Take, for example, Yeah. I played one of the officers of the German army. It was a very, very immersive LARP. It was a 360, they even shipped in tables yeah. that were correct and that little village yeah. and the fjord and everything. Everything, every fucking detail, telephones, everything is in place. I was super immersed and I was bored. Yeah. See, it doesn't necessarily need that you're immersed and it's a good game. Also because, uh, it, it, again, it's really subjective. 
So you may add kinesthetical involvement. That is a thing that almost every LARP has by default. Not all, not all video games add. Uh, there was spatial involvement there, definitely. Maybe shared if you played with friends. Narrative, maybe, if there was a part you were interested in. But if you didn't have the ludic, if you were not involved with what was happening in the game mechanically, maybe, maybe you are the kind of player that prefer the ludic involvement. We don't have words to uh, separate the different kind of immersion that you like. So it is very possible that your immersion that you like is very different in, in structure from your immersion or your immersion. Again, I don't have a solution for this. Uh, Pun yes. Word I use a lot in my daily life. I can, and my definition is my own, but I will also use it as it wasn't that good a lark, but it, it was quite fun. For example, you have a lot of crap but to go to and you calibrate yourself. If I'm hearing this, I have no idea what you're talking about. Fun is that I had a good time, but it doesn't need to be, need to be quality. But it does also depends. Like if you're playing uh, a wonderful LARP by Simon James Petit called Waiting for a Flight G901, it's a black box LARP about waiting for a flight and the flight crash. No spoiler, it's all uh, transparent. Um, the game is about boredom. It's about you making, crushing yourself in, inside because you're waiting for something from somebody and that person is, is not coming. And wh when it's coming, it may be dead. And it's like a extremely long LARP for that purpose, because it won't use boredom as a means to convey a specific experience. But if you're playing a buffer LARP, for example, and you feel bored, maybe something is wrong. Maybe. That's not necessarily true. So I think I completely agree with you that, I mean, these terms are too generic. And in academia and in the way we discuss design, we should be more specific with our emotions. But there's still a use in having more generic terms that we can... I mean, if I say I, I had fun, of course, you don't know exactly which kinds of emotion I felt, but you understand that I generally had a good time, right? And there's value in having common denominator that we can use because we understand each other much faster that way. If I have to describe to you every single emotion I felt, of course, if I'm, if I'm designing a LARP or discussing in academia, absolutely I should do that. But if I'm just talking with a friend, I mean, these words are still important. They're not going to stop being important. So I think the discussion we should have is like, um, yeah, how do, how do we make this more clear in academia or how do we make this conversation faster without using such general words? But we're not going to stop using them. No, but to be honest, this is a problem that I don't have in academia. Okay. Academia is, is, is generally more specific in terms uh, and they have way less problems. No, problem. yeah, this is a problem I have with talking with everyday people. Okay. And it's my problem, definitely. Um, I, mean, I, I didn't hide it. But if you eat food, don't you say it tastes good? And uh, at the same time, you could say, ah, oh, the, the salty flavor really compels me. Like, this is I how mean, it feels <laughs> every day. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. I get that. But I'm just saying that, you know, it's a difficult word. We can't always be analyzing every single bit. Sometimes we need to generalize to survive. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. It's just that. The game as a medium right. is having a harder time. It also, it's younger-ish. Yeah, let's yeah. say that the academic side, let's say the designer side, the, the designer, but also the research side of of games as a medium is way younger than let's say cinema or literature or any other kind of medium. Sure. Of course, so we are still in, in the young age. I would say, Yako is probably. I, I'm really scared now because you're here looking. <laughs> Um, but it really feels that we are in a younger age, and the thing is, if we still use it was a fun game, so it was a good game, or it was an immersive game, so it was a, a good game, we are losing so much of the, of the RSM potential of the, of the meaning. And honestly, can I say one last thing? Type 2 fun sounds really ridiculous. We have so many words for it. So, la, 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 la. maybe that's not what I want. I want a general word that I can say this, 
and then you can ask. And you can do the same thing with immersion. It was a very immersive game. How was, was it immersive? Yeah, but we still have a lot of words that are kind of ge more general. Okay, so if I say, oh, it was a game that made me feel proud, or a game that uh, uh, made me perplexed, or a game that uh, made me feel really weak, I'm way more, more precise with just a single word. You don't need a technical weak, tense, um, uplifted. They are single words. You don't need to be technical about it. It's just, I, I really feel that it will make the discourse, and uh, not just the academic discourse, but the common discourse, are way, way more, more useful to have. Like, uh, if I talk with you, oh, I went to this game, it was a game that was really sad for me, I really felt nostalgia there. I'm telling you a lot more than it was fun. I think I like very, very much the use of embodiment, because when you say you were involved into a game, you say you have your emotion, uh, your interest into the game, so it, it, the game, the play, uh, gives you something. Uh, if I say, uh, I went to a LARP, uh, I say, no, I was, I was bored and I wanted to go away the fastest possible, I wasn't involved, I was only bored. Um, otherwise, if I say, what's very involving, uh, I say, I was there. Uh, I had a really good time, maybe sad, maybe funny, maybe otherwise, but I can start to say, well, it's good. Why it's good? It depends. Maybe we can talk about it. But I uh, like very much that word than uh, immersive because uh, sometimes people call an immersive game uh, talking about theater that is different than uh, playing LARP, that is different than playing tabletop RPGs and I play all, all this stuff and have difficulties to, to understand. Yeah. Again, it's not a problem that is tied to LARP, it's a problem that VR has, uh, that AR has, that video game has, uh, that yeah. pervasive game and immersive theater as the name suggests has. Um, but just one thing, um, I'm not advocating for, stop, for using involvement instead of immersion because it will be, uh, as, as, as you said, it, it, it's just a changing of word, it doesn't, change, it doesn't solve the problem. They also mean different no, exactly. What I'm advocating is that we should really divide immersion in precise areas we can talk about. Because it's not true that uh, a 360 is more immersive than black box. It may be true for somebody. And, and tr truth there is very subjective also, like, but we are using, we, what I'm seeing here is a pattern that also happened in video game before, that is using immersive as with more quality. Like, oh, this is an um, open sandbox video game. You can really immerse there. It's way better game than a railroaded game. We already, the video game scene already passed through this. And I really, would we'll like to avoid this a lot, but it's already happening in a way. Yes. Did you cover? Sorry, did you cover both of the No, uh, I got the slides on the materials added to that. Yeah. Um, sadly, I couldn't add everything, and also I'm learning every day. There was uh, a talk before by Chris uh, that was also on the topic uh, tangentially, uh, but I didn't know about his work, uh, so. No, 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 just a bit more context. I've been teaching assistant of Miguel Sicard. So uh, if, if, if you know him and this problem with the word fun, also he had an imprinting on me a bit. Uh, but it just radicalized me a bit more, but that was already uh, on, on, hating on the concept of using fun as, as a good game. Like. <laughs> Yeah. How do you contextualize fun as you try to, try to get at what is it, what, what, is, what do you mean when, when, when something is fun, when it, we describe something as fun? And his analysis is that it is engaging with something as whatever it is. You, you encounter that thing as what it is, which means that sort of boredom can, can be fun if sort of you're encountering boredom and boredom is its point. But if you're doing something where you're not supposed to be bored, then it's not going to be fun. And you can Terms, that is what he is. And I find this an interesting 
it is interesting indeed, but, but what it was trying to do is was basically to academicize the word fun, and it doesn't work. And this actually is where m m me and Sarah Bowman kind of disagree, because in the content, we kind of agree. But in the end, she's for keeping the word immersion. I'm for going away from it, because it's, it's imp you cannot change. Words change, it's true, but they change through normalization of, of concepts, and it's a slow process. And if you need to go away from it a bit, you cannot use the same word because you're 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 bound to lose. Is again windmills. Uh, that's why I'm advocating for using different terms. Not because I think involvement is better than immersion. That has the same problems. Uh, I'm just saying though that if we categorize it in precise areas, we can have a way more healthy discussion about why the game was immersive for you or for me or for my friend. I don't know the time actually. Are we in time? Yeah, we are still at 15 minutes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm gonna just play the devil, uh, devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, no, do that. Uh, so I'm talking with a friend. I'm like, oh, you played that game? How was it?" And the friend's like, "Oh, sorry, you're making noise. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry." <laughs> the friend's like, "Ah, oh, well, I had some kinesthetic involvement and also some narrative involvement." And, no. You know, like, I mean, do you, do you? Okay. I, no, no, no. I, I, wait, wait. Let me finish. I, I can agree with you 100 percent that as designers, we should describe this better. But do you realize that this is also gatekeeping? Because it means you can only talk about it if you understand it. Yeah. And it's a problem. When you, when you eat food, again, do you say that it tastes good? You do. I'm so sure that if you go to a chef and you're like, it tastes good, the chef will be like, oh, good doesn't mean anything. Yeah, of course it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but, but that's also why it feels so frustrating. Yeah, because I, I know, I know it's an intrinsic problem with language. I, I, I wouldn't be here. I want to solve this. I, I can't, probably. I, I, think, uh, I think you're making it too general. I think you have to distinguish it. Like, Okay, the, thing, the fact that fun and, imbo and immersion uh, are only used as positive, that's a brilliant point. And I think it's your strongest point in this talk. And I completely agree that if a game is not fun, it could still be fantastic. And that's one thing. The second thing is, as designers, we should be more precise. And that I agree with. And the third thing is, the general people can say fun and immersion as much as they want. Because <laughs> otherwise we can't communicate. I, it's true. I know, I, I know it's true. Okay. Uh, um, uh, how much words uh, you can use with your friends? Uh, I mean, we know a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> but Talk with your friends. Yes, but but my friends, friends are not designers. <laughs> Explain yourself to yeah, yeah, your friends. But they're not designers. No, you know? no but they're, they're players. Uh, so players if they I'm though adding one thing though, because of course this had to be uh, compressed for this talk. But um, if you've talked with me in the past, you know that the problem is on different levels. So there is problem, of course, in, with talking with the public. There is also a problem with the, with the discourse of game design, and especially if you do game design for work, like me, it's a problem also with, with companies you work with. Like, I had creative, creative leads telling me, the games need to be more fun. Like, what does it mean? More fun, we need the game to be more fun. Like, yeah, okay, but more yellow. it's really shallow. <laughs> it, 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 especially if you're working in the field, and the field talks like this, it's a problem. If you're designing a LARP, and you say, we need our LARP to be more immersive, it's not going to, go, to end good. Maybe, but it's, it's way more, more efficient to work with if you know what you're affecting with. You cannot work on the thing you don't know how to affect. Uh, I think that's the problem is, uh, uh, no, uh, in the sense, uh, I uh, had uh, a lot uh, also uh, on uh, the, um, uh, the Russian laws and uh, the uh, the Holocaust, uh, and uh, when we present it, uh, we avoid in uh, uh, in every way to uh, make the word game in uh, in somewhere because we are terrified. But um, about that, that people uh, can think, oh, it's a game, it's fun, fun with the death. Very hard, <laughs> some shit person. Uh, we uh, have to block this. And that is the problem. Is the, pro the problem is uh, the perception that the public uh, have to a word fun, and the fact that uh, when you say that the, the, your work uh, is a game, so a game is fun, so it's not you don't have to do the game, okay? And, and that's a problem. And uh, the fact that uh, the people uh, uh, that play the game say, "Oh yeah, it was fun," or "It was <laughs> immersive," sure. and that. Again, way uh, or obviously don't mean that. Uh, oh yeah, a lot of love. Uh, <laughs> they mean that they were involved. 
but uh, uh, the perception is wrong. Again, I don't know how to solve it, but I'm pretty sure it's not by saying type 2 fun that we are going to solve it. Uh, I have practiced a problem as a lab designer. Maybe we can add um, with this example something to the discussion. I wrote a short lab um, in which Nazi are um, searching for you, so it's not very happy uh, um, subject, and 90% you will, everyone will hand die until the end. And it's very Mm, on the emotion and this kind, and so after the LARP, people usually are in tears. Okay, so when we, I am, we talk with these people, or we have, we started the briefing. I really don't know how to start with, because I, and I, if I want to know the degree of how the games works, because of course you see tears, but maybe it's not the the, the goals you want, or, or you know people crying for different reasons. My, I cannot use the question, did you enjoy it or did you have fun? I, I, help me as a designer, what is the question I have to, to do? Because it, it is immersive, mm, it was immersive, it's not a good question, I think, to start the debate, but fun and enjoyment put me in a very strange situation. And <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that, the, you're not the first one that, that I've talked with that has this problem, because maybe you design a game about, I design a game about abusive relationship. Are you happy you did it? Would you do it again? Yeah. No, the, 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 yeah. yeah, but, 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 but also, but also the word happy is very yeah. happy. So I, I start and now I go with. Did, you did it work? There? Did it work? Uh, I personally, <laughs> in order to avoid rewriting their own perception, I will probably be more backside and open and asking them, uh, do you have any thought that you want to share? So listening instead of. Asking a boolean question like, uh, was it fun? Was yeah, it? Yeah, uh, but I, I, just to, to, to be more clear, I'm not asking them this question. No, 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 of course. But as, as the lab is finished, but they use after the, when I say yeah. open talk, they use the word fun and enjoyment, and all of a sudden they say, yeah, I had fun. Uh, no, no, I cannot say fun. Uh, I enjoyed the lab. Uh, maybe it's enjoyed not the good word. They don't know how to describe because they cannot use. Enjoy I know. fun because the, the, the theme of the LARP clearly is not fun. It's a matter of game literacy. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect players to be able to communicate clearly what they did or are going through. You, you, I don't expect anyone's going to know the player involved. No, 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 no. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't think I've ever described the <coughs> LARP as having fantastic kinesthetic no. involvement or anything like that. But I have talked about LARPs that have, like, white death uses motion restrictions yeah. in order to do things. And I have talked about the way that those impacted my game, the way that it influenced how I play. Yeah. And the problem that you have with a lot of players often is that, they say, how was it? It was a lot of fun. Okay, what, what, what did you really like about it? I liked how much fun I had. Okay, mm. what could be better? There could be more fun. So I, you need to be able to at least describe in your own language ways that communicate what you went through and how you felt about it, even if you don't know the specific academic language. To talk this is about. a problem, again, I, I, I think maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, it's really scary to have <laughs> I got the imposter syndrome here, like. <laughs> um, I, I really think it honestly is a matter of game literacy. We, maybe we more than other people outside of this convention have even worst problem, but like, we don't have enough words to talk about it. New words are coming out super often, actually, to think about it. Like steering, how old is steering as a term? Four years. It didn't exist before as a term, but the concept existed. So I'm pretty sure there are concepts that players want to express. They really want to, but they are not able to. How do we solve this? Because we are way more proficient talking about books and movies. Are we? In general. We have better terms to talk about it. There is still a lot of problem understanding them, of course, because literacy is a thing that you need effort a bit to, to, to have. Uh, and for many reasons, uh, you may not be proficient in a lot of uh, mediums. Like sculpture-wise, I really suck. I don't know how to talk about sculptures, for example. That just a, yeah. You had a question?
indeed Gordon's model. I think Gordon's model is something that, that sort of we can talk about. We just would, won't be using words. That no, so exactly. I, I can say that sort of I went to this lab and I, I really liked the action. The, the slow location was shit, but some of the flavors were awesome. I didn't really get to play the pot that I really wanted, but I had a super strong emotional reaction yep. to something. And we, we have the words to talk about this stuff. It's just that we maybe don't have the categories. Exactly. I'm not asking you to remember these categories, of course. But if you want players to talk about these things, you can guide a bit the process of a discussion. Like, uh, what about the environment? Generally, it refers to spatial, okay? And the space. You can talk about space. People know what space is. Uh, ish. Um, you can talk about the, the physical involvement. Like, if it's a LARP about running, you probably want players to give their opinion about, well, we run for 24 hours non-stop, all in-game. That's a clearly physical thing that is present in your LARP. LARP is also peculiar because we don't need to talk about mostly about kinesthetic because generally it's all already ingrained in, in, the, in the medium that, of LARP. Uh, Nina forms and non-verbal LARPs, it's where kinesthetic involvement is really important because it's literally the thing that the game focuses about mainly. It's about changing the way you move because now movement is way more significant instead of a part or larp yes i am my character but it's what i say the important part not where i move in the room do we still have time we have three minutes uh, yeah I, um, I, I was thinking about uh, three years ago i think uh Poiron, the director mm -hmm. um uh, did uh, an uh, artistic uh, installation installation uh, um, where you um, uh, were um, using a voir, okay, um, and uh, there was uh, uh, the American army who stopped you as a uh, from immigration from the refugee. Mexico. Yes, okay. anyway. uh, that was uh, in the fact a lap with uh, the NPC in the voir, okay. But it was uh, an artistic installa installation, and uh, when uh, the people came out, uh, nobody. Um, to, to say something uh, like uh, it was uh, um, it was fun uh, or uh, I enjoyed it be because uh, it was uh, from uh, an artistic situation and so you use uh, the artistic uh, language but uh, it is uh, the same things that we are doing uh, with uh, the very first come and so on so uh, why this happen again I think because people perceive art as very different in from when how they perceive games and but game but can be art. I know, problem. but it's a, again a problem of literacy. Uh, I think. Uh, you had one, yeah. Um, I think it's very important to not forget, and I'm sure you know, but to be aware of the fact that a lot that was a terrible experience uh, and still taught you something, etc., can still be enjoyable, fun, mm -hmm. even. I, I often get the feeling that when I'm in a lot that is really tough then I get an enjoyment out of the, the, out of the process of the law, of, of how awesome it is. Uh, it can be sort of like, of course, breaking immersion, if that is what you want. But, but often I, I feel myself, after having died in a great lab or whatever, smiling all over. Because, holy shit, that was awesome and terrible. I, I cried at a buffer LARP. Mm -hmm. It was literally a buffer LARP. It was not a kind of Nordic uh, stuff. It was a buffer LARP. Mm -hmm. It was a particularly emotional moment. Yeah. Game design-wise, the game sucked. <laughs> but in that moment, I had shared involvement. I was playing with a, with a friend of mine, and we really had a, a deep <coughs> narrative and effective involvement related to some plot stuff that really touched some, some of my personal bleed key points. So I cried. I and mean, it was not because we were using uh, buffer swords. That nothing to do with the combat system, nothing to do with the, with the ludic involvement there. Uh, so you can really have the, the thing of, this is a good game, terrible experience. <laughs> terrible game, great experience. You can have that. I have board games that I really love, but I will not play again. Um, I, I, maybe I, I'm a, a little bit basic because I'm teaching aesthetics at the university. But I, what shocked me is, since I, I believe that LARP is a form of art, a language like cinema, music, literature, and, but it's very, the, what shocked me in the LARP is the absence of the word beauty, beautiful. 
this idea because it's, it's crucial in every kind of um, evaluation of artistic form. Aesthetics, li literally, bur bur the birth of aesthetics is linked to what is beauty. And when I ask how was the, the LARP, they are, the, the LARP are very analytic in compared to people that go to the concert or because how was the, the movie, beautiful? And then they say, I was a terrible story, blah, blah, blah. but the first word is beautiful. How was this concert? Beautiful. How was this LARP? It was uh, about blah, 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 I was blah, 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 so I had fun. Uh, they are way more analytic, but we have this lack of word beauty. And if we rely on the word beauty, if we link LARP to, to, to the, all the discussion about beauty, uh, being beautiful, the, the, your the point about the literacy will become just century, century of very good thinker about yeah. that. And I think we need the, this is a good. This is a good solution. Oh, I think okay. that they didn't tell you, this, is, this talk is actually a curse. So now every time you see your fun, you uh, I got Pavlovian uh, reaction uh, now. So if somebody <laughs> said fun into the room, I like and <laughs> this will happen. <laughs> uh, I think we yeah, time's over. Uh, thank you for coming here, and I'm always willing to talk about it. Woo! And <laughs> I I may have screamed a bit, no, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I just realized that. I, that part of Italian gene Woo! came over and uh, like uh, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs>